Welcome to part three of my free user forms course. Here I'm going to show you how to make multi-column combo boxes. I'm going to tell you what they are, why they are so important, and then how to use them properly. And this is a smaller version of a tutorial that I have in my full course, which covers so much more about user forms and VBA and everything under the sun for macros in Excel. So check the link in the description of this video if you're interested in that. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. Now let me tell you what a single column versus a multi-column combo box is because you may never have heard that before. So here we have a list of values and I want to display them in a drop down menu. So I use a combo box. Now we only have one column of values. So it is a single column combo box. If I run the sample right here, combo dependent, this is a dependent combo box example. This one on the left has the categories fruit and vegetables. One column of values and that is it. And for this window, I click a value over here and then I get fruits here if I clicked fruit in the left and vegetables if I clicked vegetables over there. This is a dependent combo box dropdown example from my full course, and we're not going to be covering that here. But that shows you what a single column combo box is like. It's the regular one that you've always been using. But now let's go to the multi-column values tab. And what we want to do here is to put all three of these columns inside of the combo box instead of just a single column for the colors. Now there are two reasons why you really want to do that. One, you want to show the user more information. So here we have a type column and maybe that's very, very important. So you want to show them both of these columns so that they can pick the most appropriate option. But here we have an ID column and you may want to include all three of these columns, including the ID column because this column here uniquely identifies every value in our list. Maybe we have the same color multiple times or the same type multiple times and we need a way to uniquely identify it. And the best part about this is that we can hide this column so it doesn't confuse the user, but we can still use it in our code. So we can have a huge list of customers or stores or whatever values we need to display and then have a unique ID column that the user never sees, but we use to match everything up correctly. So let's go build our multi-column combo box, Alt F11. And I'm not going to show you how to make the user form here because we're going to go with a very simple example. And I showed you how to make it earlier in the course. The only thing to note here is that this guy is called CBO multi for combo box multi and this guy is CMD view info. Let's first go by double clicking the user form and change the click event to the initialize event and remove this guy and let's get some values in our combo box. And I'm going to show you a new way to input the value so we can input an entire array at once. But first, let's go back to the worksheet, Alt F11. I want to make sure we're on the same page with this guy. This is a table, and its name is TBL Parts. And we are going to use that to reference this guy. At the top here, let's declare a variable to hold the range that we want to use, RNG, a list as a range. This is not required, but it makes some of the things we're going to do a little bit easier. And let's go ahead and put the range from that table into this variable. So set RNG list equal to uh, this workbook dot worksheets. And remember, a table is part of a worksheet. And so we reference the name of the worksheet, multi column values and a list objects, because a table is actually a list object in VBA. A little bit confusing, but it makes coding a little bit easier once you understand it. And all we have to do here is to input the name TBL parts. So the name of the table and then period, what part of the table do we want to reference? There are so many cool things that you can do. We're going to reference only the data inside of the table. So data body range. 
And if that looks a little bit crazy, don't worry. If you take the full course, I have a nice little tutorial on tables, advanced tables, and then all sorts of range tutorials. This is very easy by this point in the course. So we've got our range reference, big long thing, and all we have to do now is to put it into the combo box. So we reference the combo box, CBO, control space to auto fill it in. There we go, CBO multi tab. There we go, period list. We are going to use the list property, which is a great thing that allows us to put entire lists, arrays of values into the combo box all at once. So all we have to do now that we have our range reference is type it here, dot value. And that is it. Now we have all of our data in the combo box. All we have to do now is to tell us how many columns we want it to actually display. So we reference the combo box again and go to column count. And we have three columns of data. So let's input three. And now let's test it out and take a look at all the values. Hit play. And there we go. Column one, two, and three. Now it doesn't look so good. We're going to fix that in just a moment. And then I'm going to show you how to get all of these values out of this. There are a number of interesting ways to do that. But at this point, we have a working combo box. You click a value and one of the columns values will appear here. We're also going to control that in just a moment because you don't want the ugly ID number there. That's very confusing. You want to have the color there instead. So close this guy and double click. All right, another little tip for the column count, by the way, if you don't want to hard code that, you can go range.list, so our range variable, then reference columns with an S, and then count. And that automatically counts how many columns are in your range. But now that we've got columns, let's figure out how big we want to make them. So CBO multi dot column widths right there equals and I'm going to go ahead and put the quotes for this guy and what you want to do now is to put in a number for how wide you want each column to be and by default it's going to use the same units of measurement as columns in the worksheet let's say that for the first column we want 20 the second one 50 and the third one 30 then we run it and take a look it all fits in the drop down menu now no horizontal scroll bar. But now let's get rid of the ID column because that guy is not something that we want there. And this is so easy to do. All you have to do is to put that column's width at zero. Run it. No more ID column. And the visible value is now going to be the color. The visible value is going to be the first visible column of data. The ID column is no longer visible. Its width is zero, so it uses color, the next column. Now let's go ahead and more precisely control which column's value appears there, because maybe you don't want it to be the second column. And we have a couple great properties. Once again, reference CBO multi, and this time text column. Text column is the value that appears there after you have made a selection. So it was first an ID number, now it's the color. What if we only want it to display type? Well, put three in for the column. Then we can run it and choose black again, and it displays a B because that's the value from the third column. Now, very important beyond just a display value, you may have seen this before, there is a text property. And the text property is going to get you the value from the text column. And the text column is the one that you see when you make a selection in the combo box. But there's another property that you may have often seen, and that is CBO multi dot value the value property. This is the piece of data that you want to get into the back end so you can do something with it. And we control that using the bound column property. And we set it to one, two, or three because we have three columns. Do we have any unique identifier that's going to be great for programming but we don't want to show the user? 
Yes, we do. The ID column, which is column number one. So now I can set a nice, beautiful visual column to show the user when they make a selection. I have hidden the ID column up here. But down here, I have said, I want you to make the ID column the bound column so I can get it using the value property. I know this seems confusing the first time you see it, and it seems like a lot of work, but it is so very important to be able to control where you get a uniquely identifiable value from for your list of selections. And when you use a list box, you can have multiple selections, something that I cover in the full course, but I'm not going to cover here. So now we have controlled the bound column and the text column, and let's go ahead and get all of these values. I'm just going to comment this out, and what we are going to do, remove some extra space, and we're going to go over here, double click View Info, and make some space, and get all of these values. Now you already know how to get the text value, CBO multi dot text, and you already know how to get the value property. In a moment we're going to output them, for now I'm just going to type them out. Now let's get a value from a specific column in the combo box, CBO multi dot column. And here, column 1 is 0. This is the first column, the ID column, then 1 is column 2 and 2 is column 3. Now what's the last thing you need to know is how to get the index number of the selected value and that is list index. It's a really really helpful piece of information that says hey you selected row 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. However just like column this begins at 0. So 0 is for row 1, 1 is for row 2 and so on. Now I use list index more in the full version of this tutorial in the course, but for here I just want to show it to you because in just a moment I'm going to have an output that includes it. So let me paste in something that's going to output all of this. It's a very simple message box, but it would take way too long for me to type here. We're going to output the value, the text, and the value from column 1, 2, and 3, as well as the list index from the combo box. Let me really quickly change the text column back to 2, which is the color for this example, and let's run this guy. And how about we choose black, and view info. There we go. The value property is 3, text black, and then columns 1, 2, and 3 are 3, black, and B, with a list index of 2. So list index 2 because it is in the third row. This little message box testing in the worksheet with all the values here in the multi-column combo box is a great way to better understand how all of this works together. And once you get comfortable with this, you can do so much more. You can make your dependent combo boxes, your dependent list boxes, list boxes with all of the values and the different columns and selections, and you can add items and remove items. You can do so many things. And I cover all of those in the full version of this tutorial and the full VBA course linked to in the description of this video. So if you're interested in those things, check that out. As for this tutorial, that's all there is.